Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is Simon and uh, this is my review for episode 3 of season 6 of uh, Game of Thrones. Uh, episode was titled Oathbreaker and it was really coming into it. It left many possibilities open. Uh, was it going to relate to Jon Snow in a way? Was it going to relate to Brienne? Was it going to relate to Jamie? It, it could have been any number of, of uh, possibilities. And uh, I thought this was a really good episode, and it's kind of left... Uh, it's one of those episodes in the season where you look at it and you think, this is the turning point, this is where all stories are going to start, you know, converging together uh, towards the end of the season. Um, there's some, there's a couple of shocking moments, uh, a couple of satisfying moments, uh, but for the most part, certainly con compared to last week, it was a bit more low-key. Uh, so we opened up, again, following on from the aftermath of Jon Snow coming back to life Davos is completely bewildered as anyone would be and it looks like Melisandre has got some of her faith back it looks like they're going to declare Jon Snow as the prince who was promised or as or a high and the wildlings seem to think he's some sort of a god but I, I definitely don't think he wants to be treated that way and I think he's kind of lost in himself so um, you know as we saw at the very end of the episode he gave up his uh, Oath to the Night's Watch, which is what we eventually realised was the in relation to the title. I personally think he's going south to um, become Jon Stark. I think we won't see Jon Snow now until the Battle of Winterfell. I think the Wildlings are going to march, um, march south uh, to face Ramsay and the, uh, the forces of the North once Davos uh, realises that Rickon has been captured, he's going to probably try and accumulate as many forces as possible to ride south. Um, and during the battle, Jon Snow's probably going to show up. That's my opinion. I think that's what's going to happen. He'll show up as Jon Stark. That would be awesome. Can you imagine a Lord of the Rings style um, entrance, you know, where you see Rohan come in and, and save Gondor? Can you imagine that with Jon Snow in Stark armour? Um, with, you know, allies of the north that would be absolutely awesome um we saw a few other bits and bobs uh we saw Arya get her sight back after going through what can only be described as a hellish experience um i mean she got beat down bad and she still held her will i think she's probably the strongest willed stark child having been through everything that she's been through and to still carry on um, you know that that takes some will, and it's going to be interesting to see where she goes from here. What she has to do is she going to finish off her kill list? Um, we'll just have to wait and see. We saw um, obviously back to Winterfell. We saw the biggest shock of the episode. We saw the the resurgence of Osha and Rickon. I mean, Rickon has aged quite a bit, considering that uh, Gilly's baby has barely aged a couple of months. Rickon has aged a few years and he's put on quite a few feet in height so I don't know how that works you know it's been a bit weird um but yeah I mean I was shocked to see Rickon back I assumed that he was gone and he would I mean because obviously in the books Davos is sent to go and find him because they think he's in an island somewhere but to see him captured by the Umbers of all people um it was it was fairly shocking and it kind of brings some closure on the Umber storyline, at least for the TV show. Uh, Great John Umber was one of my favourite commanders of the North. Um, if for those of you who don't know, he was the guy who had his fingers bitten off by um, by Rob's wolf. Um, and speaking of wolves, how devastating was it to see um, Shaggy Dog had been killed at another um, Stark wolf down? I think now we've only got uh, Ghost at Castle Black. Interesting point, we didn't see Ghost leave with Jon Snow. I thought Ghost would have left with him. Um, and Arya's wolf as well, which is out in the wild somewhere. I believe they are the only two wolves left. Um, you know, so... Um, oh no, and we've also got Bran's uh, wolf Summer as well. So yeah, um, it's going to be interesting to see where that goes. What's Ramsay going to do? Is he going to hold the north to ransom? Um... I certainly, to God, hope he does not kill Rickon. Um, that would be horrific if that happened. But I fear the worst. Um, coming on to Bran himself, we saw the flashback to the Tower of Joy with Ned and his northern allies against the uh, the the Kingsguard. And 
Uh, it was a little bit off because there was supposed to be three Kingsguard and seven Northmen. But in this, there was only six Northmen and two Kingsguard. My word, Sir Arthur Dane, you are a badass. I mean, I don't know how you compare to Sir Barristan and Selmy, but if Sir Barristan and Selmy was anything the fighter that you are, I want to see a prequel story about Sir Barristan. That's going to be awesome. Um, I was disappointed they kind of cut us off as he goes into the tower because we all know what we want to see. Um, R and L equals J. And unfortunately, it wasn't confirmed this week, but I've got a feeling towards the end of the season, we're going to get to see the rest of that you know, flashback um, once Bran has done a bit more training. Uh, we didn't see anything of the Iron Islands or the fallout from last week. Um, you know, the King's Moot is probably going to be next. And we saw Sam and Gilly for the first time this season on the boat to Old Town. It looks like Gilly's going to be going to Horn Hill with the baby. It's going to be interesting to see how Sam's family reacts to that, because as we know, Sam's dad is not Sam's biggest fan. Um, yeah, so certainly compared to last week, not that much of a shock. Um, you know, we saw Danny arrive in Vazed Off Rack, um, and it's probably going to be a case of she will have this trial deciding what to do with her. Drogon's going to show up, I guess, at the last second to save her. And uh, she'll fly back to Marine. Who knows what's going to happen from there? Because that, that Marine is in chaos. Tyrion doesn't seem to know what to do. Uh, Varys is trying to find out what's going on. Who knows? Um, the same as King's Landing. The King is being manipulated by the High Sparrow. Um, you know, we, we've seen that the Cersei has got no power at all on the small council. Kevin is just not having it, which I love. I love Kevin. Um, but Pycelle, you've got to keep an eye out, man. You you have got yourself on the uh, the mountain's uh, bad list. And it's interesting to see that they are calling him Sir Gregor. In the books, as people who haven't seen read the books... Uh, he's called Sir Robert Strong, and it's never officially confirmed that he is the mountain. Uh, but the TV show, you know, has quite clearly marked him down as Gregor. Um, you know, I I really feared a little bit when I saw that scene with um, Kyburn and the kids. I was thinking, oh no, what's going on here? Are those berries poisoned or whatever? But thankfully, it didn't turn out that way. But no, it was a good episode. I'm really looking forward to next week now. Um, my reaction to the episode will be up very shortly. I'm going to be editing that uh, as we speak. And uh, so be sure to check that out. I will once that's done, I'll put the link in the description below. As I say, it's literally going to be my reaction, so there's going to be no review stuff before or after. That's why I'm making this video. So yes, um, let me know what you guys thought of the episode. Let me know what you think is going to happen in the season to come. But as always, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for watching. Um, please subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Check out my other videos, and I will see you soon.